In this video, we are going to begin the non-blocking series using the Winsock API. For the code that we're starting with, we're just going to use the code from the last video in the Winsock blocking series. The first thing I'd like to do is set up a server class and a client class to try to hide all of our current logic behind. So inside of our server project, we're going to add a header for the server. And what we're going to do here is just put our include. And for our server class, we are going to have a function to initialize with the IP endpoint that the server will be listening on. And then we're going to have a frame function that we call in a loop. And then of course, we're going to have our socket for our listening socket. So first let's set up the initialize. I'm going to go ahead and generate the frame as well. So for initialize, what we will do is if we go back to our source code, and also for now, I'm just going to comment out the process packet code. And when we get to this part in the series, uh, we'll review how we will actually implement that. For the includes, we are instead just going to include the server header, and that should be fine. And if we go down here, we're just going to copy all the code that we had before the network shutdown. We're just going to cut that, go back to our server CPP, and paste this in for initialize. Now if we get down here, we'll be returning false because that meant that something went wrong along the way. We need to include IOStream to access C out and C air. Before, we were just creating a socket and calling it socket, but this was really our listening socket. So what we're going to do is we're going to say listening socket equals, and we'll call the socket constructor. Now, instead of specifying an IP version, we're going to use the IP version of the IP endpoint passed in. So we can do that by just doing ip.get IP version. Next, we need to replace socket with listening socket. And when we call listen on our listening socket, instead of specifying the IP endpoint, we will just pass in IP. And I'll change where we had successfully listening on port 4970, just successfully listening. Now at this point, this is where we were accepting new connections. So I'm going to cut the code where we were accepting new connections. And this is going to go down in our server frame for now, and we'll come right back to that. Now back in our initialize, once we get to the point where we are successfully listening, we're going to return true because that means that we've initialized our server and our listening socket is in a listening state. Otherwise, you know, we'll say fail to uh, listen, and then we will close the listening socket, and then we will return false down here. Now, if we go back to our source CPP, the way this will look is something like this. We'll declare a server object, and then we will attempt to initialize the server. If the server is initialized, then we'll just go into a while loop where we call the server frame function. Of course, there's no way to exit this while loop, so in a real application, we'd have maybe like a key we hit to shut it down or maybe some way to get out of this. Now let's go to the server frame that will be called every single frame. So the first thing is we can change this to be listening socket for accepting the new connection. And then when we get down here, instead of having our while loop where we are receiving data, I'm going to take that out because we don't have the process packet anyways to access right here. And we're just going to uh, accept the connection and then close the connection. The way that our program is currently set up, the server can just accept connections and then it will close them right after they connect. If we go back up to our client and we modify the connecting to use our new port, which was 6112, what we will do is let's start up the server and let's run the client. And you see what happens is the client connects, it tries to send data, it sees that the connection is lost, and then we get press any key to continue. And you see on the server, we have new connection accepted. Now, if the client goes to connect again, you know, clients can keep connecting with this current setup. 
However, we aren't able to accept any data and we're still using blocking sockets. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a similar thing in the client where we set up a client class. So we'll create a new header. We'll call this client.h. And the client will be similar to the server in that we're going to have a frame function that gets called every frame. The main difference is in the client, when we call frame, we'll return true or false. And if we get back false, that means that the connection was lost. We'll also have a function to check if the client is still connected. And then of course, we'll have a connect function where we pass in the IP endpoint. We're going to store a Boolean for if the client is still connected and have a socket to hold the socket for the client. Let's first go ahead and set up the connect. And I'll go ahead and generate the definitions for is connected and frame as well. For connect, what we're going to do is go back to our source CPP. We're just going to cut everything we have and go into the client CPP. Make sure we include IOStream and let's paste this right here. If we get to the bottom of the code, we'll return false because we fail to connect if we get down here. However, if we go up, once we see successfully connected to server, we will return true. We're going to take that code that we were doing every frame and we're going to cut it. We're going to put that down in the frame function. One thing we're going to change here is we're going to remove the while loop since we will call frame in a while loop. And instead of breaking, if it's not successful, we will return false. And if it is successful, we will return true. So our frame function will just call in a while loop and that'll work exactly like it was before. For is connected, we're just going to return the is connected variable. And one other thing is in a frame, if we uh, get a failure when sending, we return false. Before we return false, we also need to set is connected to false. Now let's go back to connect. So there's a few things we'll have to change. First, we were declaring a new socket here. What we'll end up doing is instead we'll just say our member variable called socket. We will call the constructor for a socket. And for the IP version, we'll just get the version from the argument passed in for the IP endpoint. When they go to connect, instead of specifying the IP endpoint, we will just pass in IP. And the last thing is at the top here, we'll initialize is connected to false. I believe this is all set up correct. So let's go back to the source CPP for the client and we are going to include the client header. And the way that we'll do this for the client is we're just going to declare a client object just like we did for the server. We are going to connect to the local host using IPv6 because that's an IPv6 address on port 6112. And then while the client is connected, we're going to call the client frame function. So currently, if we test this, we should get the exact same thing that we just got because this code works the same. The only difference is we've just restructured it a bit. And there you go. We see successfully connected, press any key to continue because we lost connection. And then on the server, we see that we got our new connection and the IP of it. So far in this tutorial, we've done some restructuring and created a client and server class, but we haven't changed our sockets to be non-blocking. So now we need to add a new function to our socket class in order to set a socket to blocking or non-blocking. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new function called set blocking. It'll return a P result and it will pass in an argument for whether the socket should be blocking or non-blocking. Let's generate this definition. In order to set a socket to blocking or non-blocking, we'll call something called IOCTL socket. This stands for IO control and it's specifically for sockets, so it says socket. If we were in Linux, since in Linux it's like everything's a file, we would just use IOCTL where we would pass in the socket handle. However, we're using the WinSock API, so we're going to use IOCTL socket. The first argument is a handle to the socket, 
so we can just pass in the handle from our socket class. The next argument is the command to perform on this socket. In order to change the I.O. to non-blocking I.O., we're going to pass in the command F.I.O.N. Bio. And if you want to change it to blocking, it's that same command. And the last argument is an unsigned long pointer to the value that you want to perform on this command. The way that this works is non-blocking has a value of 1, and blocking and blocking has a value of 0. So if we wanted to set it to non-blocking, we would just pass in the address of that. However, we want to be able to set it to either non-blocking or blocking with this function. So we are going to use a conditional operator. So what we'll do is we'll say, if it is blocking, then we are going to use the address of blocking. Otherwise, we are going to use the address of non-blocking. Next, we need to take into account what this function returns. If this function fails, it will return socket error. And of course, we can get the actual error that occurred by calling WSA get last error. If this happens, we're going to return our generic error. Of course, otherwise, we will return success. We know that we want to use non-blocking sockets for all of our sockets. So let's go up to our socket create function. And after we call the socket function to actually create the socket is where we would uh, call set blocking. So what we'll do is we'll say if set blocking false, because we don't want it to block, is not equal to success, then we will return a generic error. Now let's see what this effect has on our server. So let's go down to the server and let's start a new instance because now we are using a non-blocking socket. Well, you see we're constantly spammed with fail to accept a new connection. Now the reason that this is happening is if we go to our server code, we are calling our accept function over and over. And since we are now using non-blocking sockets, it does not wait for a connection to accept. It just goes through the code to the next part. And also you see it is racking up our CPU usage a bit. Uh, what are we at? About 4%, which is really high when it's not doing anything. I guess, of course, it is spamming that uh, print. As you can see, though, part of the issue is we are trying to accept a connection even though there is no connection to be accepted. So we are getting spammed with failed to accept a new connection. That being said, our server will still function how we expect, other than that part. But the client, on the other hand, it won't work. So for example, let's try running the server again. And now let's run the client. So you see what happened was the client failed to connect to the server. The reason is because with non-blocking sockets, when you call connect, what happens is Connect will almost always return socket error, and you will have to wait until there is some event to be read on the socket to determine if you successfully connected or not. Because of this, what we are going to do for now is we are going to make the client use a blocking socket just while we work on developing the server, and then later we will change the client to use non-blocking sockets and imitate what the server is doing. After we create the socket on the client connect, we are going to set it to use blocking sockets. And of course, if that fails, we will return false. And now what that lets us do is we can run the server and we can run the client. And now you see the client is able to connect again. I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here. In the next video, we are going to look at how to pull a socket to see if it has data that is ready to be read. We are going to use this to see if there is an incoming connection on the listening socket before we attempt to accept that connection.